What is remote viewing? Well, remote viewing is a psi-based mental process, and people who know much about remote viewing agree on at least that much. But beyond that, there is considerable disagreement. The term remote viewing was used by the United States military in defense-related research projects from the 1970s through much of the 1990s. Now, probably because of this, the term appears to have developed a permanent place in the public's vocabulary of psychic phenomenon. However, remote viewing can mean different things to different people. It typically involves the ability of a person to perceive and describe something or place that is separate from him or her in a space or time. Not surprisingly, because remote viewers were often called upon to describe and draw visual information, visual concepts often dominated the early discussions of this phenomenon. But remote viewing is not limited to visual information. Now, some scientists have desired to use other more general terms to describe psi functioning, such as Dr. Edwin May's recent and useful coining of the term anomalous cognition. Nonetheless, the term remote viewing is likely to remain the term most widely recognized by many people as referring to the apparent psychic ability to describe distant places and events. Pioneering researchers at a few scientific laboratories, such as SRI International, Science Applications International Corporation, Princeton Engineering Anomalous Research, or PEAR, and elsewhere, have spent years investigating the remote viewing phenomenon. A significant and growing number of scientific papers have been published in distinguished peer-reviewed outlets that describe the investigations of the researchers in these laboratories in considerable detail. Now, within this field, there is no single method of remote viewing that is universally accepted as dominant or even preferred. The book by the talented remote viewer Joseph McMonagle, Remote Viewing Secrets, a handbook, contains good descriptions of the remote viewing methods and controls that have been used in many of these laboratories. Now, some of the remote viewing methods have military origins and they have become quite standardized and are known by specific names such as extended remote viewing or ERV and controlled remote viewing or CRV. Some remote viewers have developed their own individualized methods that seem to work for them. Others have simply followed instructions as given to them by the primary investigators of a given project. The overall range of these methods varies from simply trying to sense out what's there to more structured processes involving meditation, detailed procedures, and other techniques. What is common amongst most of the laboratory experiments is not so much the remote viewing methodology used by the test subjects, but the scientific procedures used to evaluate the existence of psi phenomena. These procedures tend to be highly sophisticated, and they address a large variety of scientific ideas, such as blind versus double-blind testing environments and statistical controls. At the Farsight Institute, we work with people who have specialized in a variety of different remote viewing methodologies, such as Dick Algeyer and Daz Smith. But we also teach a version of remote viewing that we call advanced scientific remote viewing, which is what Aziz Brown and Princess Genet, as well as some other viewers still in training, use. We also consistently experiment with new techniques. So there is no one rigid orthodoxy here at Farsight. We are driven by results. Results obtained in public and verifiable experiments is all that matters. So, that, in brief, is what the remote viewing term typically stands for. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.